my home club, Sun City Toastmasters, I gave a speech about the challenges that I had in training to climb Mount Adams. I had two fears. One was the fear of heights. And I took in everything that Sheila said in her speech last month about her fear of heights. The other one was my fear of glissading, which is coming down the mountainside on your rear end on the snow, down the hillside at could be a very fast rate. I was fearful that I would be out of control in that descent. My son gave me an opportunity when he told me about climbing Mount Adams, because he did it two years ago. He said, Mom, when you come to that steep part, just don't look down. <laughs> I figured on the glissading part, the way I'm going to deal with that is I'll just deal with it when I get there. Nothing I could do to prepare for that. At the end of my speech, I had my 35-pound backpack on, my ice sack. After sharing my fears and what I wanted to do, I said, I'm strong, with my ice axe in my hand, I'm prepared, and I'm making it to the top. Fellow Toastmasters, I've made it to the top. How did I do that? One step at a time. My journey started at the ranger station on July 22nd, 8 o'clock in the morning. We picked up our volcano passes. And that is where you get a tag that you fill out your name and your contact information. You put it on your backpack. It stays there in case something happens to you. They find your body. They know who you are. The other thing you pick up is your excrement bag, which means everything you out. I mean, you bring in, you take out. After 36 hours, there's going to be an elimination process. You have to gather everything up, put it in some kitty litter, a Ziploc bag, and then put it in the friend's backpack. <laughs> <laughs> what a thing to carry. <laughs> Our climb started in the parking lot at 53 hundred feet. We were to climb up to lunch counter, which is at 9,500 feet, spend the night, and then go the next morning to the apex of Mount Adams, which is 12,400 feet. I figured in the first part of my journey, it was a gain of 3,500 feet, over six miles. If I could do one mile an hour, I would be able to make it to lunch counter. We stopped every hour to take a break, have water, refuel our bodies with the snacks that we brought. About an hour and a half into the hike, we were already into the snow level, and there comes a portion where it looks a little bit steep, but then definitely steeper on a mountainside. A short one, not very tall, but it was steep. I thought, well, I can do this. It just looks like it's the snow ladder, so all I have to do is just climb up the snow ladder. There are several people in front of me, and I was watching this lady a couple hundred feet ahead of me. She's up most of the way to the top, and she is freaking out. She is realizing that this was steep. I said to myself, I bet this is the part where my son said, don't look down. I went along, came to the portion where it was really steep, fell, followed one step at a time, the steps that were in the snow, didn't look down, looked ahead, got to the top. Behind me was my friend Jackie, and I still wasn't going to look down after I came over the cliff. So I'm yelling to my friend, Jackie, you're doing great, you're almost there. I lied. I didn't know. I wasn't looking over the edge. But I was encouraging her along her journey. We come to the several hours later, and we're getting close to lunch hour. 
lunch counter. And the organizer of the trip, who's a mountaineer, the week before he had climbed Mount Rainier, this weekend he was climbing Mount Adams. He came down from lunch counter with no backpack on and said, anybody want me to carry their pack? My friend said, Jackie, sure, you can have mine. I had a 35 pound pack on, she had a 30 pound pack on. I was carrying the tent that we were gonna sleep in that night. And I'm thinking, really Jackie? You should be able to carry that. But we got up to lunch counter, set up her tent. It's not like KOA. <laughs> There's no benches to sit on. In fact, the tent that I had, you couldn't even sit up to put your clothes on. You had to kind of lay down in it. Rocks everywhere, volcanic rock that had been stacked in areas for a windbreak, and then sandy rock on the bottom. If I had three hours of sleep that night, I considered myself lucky. The next morning we got up at 4.45 to learn how to use our ice axe, how to arrest ourselves if we were to fall down the mountain. I saw a video prior to that and I thought, oh my gosh, this is not something that you're gonna learn in three easy steps. We hiked up the hill a little bit, and we had to practice eight times sliding down and stopping ourselves with our ice ducks. Every time I did it, the leader said, no, grab it up here, dig it in like this. And when you do this, grab the bottom, have it close to your body. Tried it eight times. None of those times did I get a perfect score. My friend said to me, I doubt we're really gonna use this ice axe anyway. <laughs> so we're up, going up the hill. And I had been cold the night before, so I had three layers of pants on. I had long johns, my hiking pants, and my glissading pants. On the top, I had a short sleeve shirt, a long sleeve hiking shirt, a little polo jacket, and my rain jacket, wind jacket over that. I know better, looks like Mark does too, that you don't start out warm, you start out cold. You, and because it's gonna get hot as you hike up the hill. I did, it didn't take very long and I was cooking. So I started taking off layer on layer upon layer. My backpack was only supposed to be 10 pounds and I think it was more like 13 when I started out. Each layer that I took off made my backpack heavier. Also, I started to sweat. And I thought, how am I gonna get these pants off? We were almost three quarters of the way up the false summit. And the leader said to me, can I carry your backpack? And I said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> he also helped me take my spikes off, take my glissading pants off, he zipped off my hiking pants. All I had was the <clears throat> um, long johns and my shorts. We get to the top and he puts my backpack there in an area for us to just leave it there. So he wasn't carrying my backpack very far. We make it to the top and as I'm going up the last segment, people that in our group had already came down the mountain, were coming down the mountain, they were encouraging us, saying, you're almost there, it's beautiful at the top, keep going, it's worth it. What a thing to do as you're taking your one step at a time to get to the top. And I might say that one step at a time was a rest step at times. A time where you would take a step, <coughs> your downhill leg would go straight to rest a moment, take another step, make your leg go straight, call the rest step. When we got to the top, it was very brief, but it was such elation to have our little group up there. Mm -hmm at the top. I also had a take for my Sun City Toastmaster group a picture of me with my ice axe basically <laughs> saying I made it to the top. Going down, glissading, well that was my other challenge. I watched people as they were coming down glissading. I figured pretty much they can go ahead and you can go as slow as you want. After going up that far and that hard, I decided, I don't care, I'm doing it, and I can just slow myself down. 
went down the hill, started to slow myself down. It didn't slow myself down with the pick. And so I had to four times use my ice axe, slide myself over and dig it into the snow and stop myself. We went down to lunch counter, put all our gear in our backpacks, it took about an hour to take our tents down and put everything in there. I see you're coming, so. <laughs> and, um, and we finally make our descent down to the parking lot where they have pop, chips, <laughs> and hot dogs for us. I got at home on Saturday at 11 o'clock at night, exhausted. <clears throat> The next morning, I was Sunday morning, I was reflecting about my climb. And the tears came to me. It wasn't just tears. I was sobbing. I was sobbing because I was thinking about all the things it took for me to get to the top. The training, I didn't learn how to put 35 pounds on my back overnight. It took incremental steps of having heavier weight on my back. The training with my friends and encouraging one another in our fear, that one step at a time that it took for me to do the training, one step at a time to get at the top of the mountain. Monday morning I went to work and I had a patient who had a kidney transplant two years ago. First thing she said to me was, Kathy, I do not want to be here. I don't feel good. I know I'm supposed to be here. Well, I'm here. I'm just going to be obedient and be here. Bring her back in my chair. And I think, my gosh, this lady has to do one step at a time every day for the last two years and beyond that, before that. My journey made me realize not only one step at a time that it takes each of us to go through difficulty in our lives, but also to have more empathy for those who have to take one step at a time and realizing what that is. In life, we have those moments that we might have to take one step at a time. But there are also times when you can be like my leader who took my backpack or friends that said, you're doing good and being an encourager. I look at that mountain and I say, I did it one step at a time. Mr. Toastmaster.